Sea Dream 4.0, the new state-of-the-art image model by the team behind TikTok, just unlocked motion graphics made with AI. And in this video, you will learn how to automate this with N8N, where we will use Sea Dream to create 4K 60fps motion graphics for dashboard and website visualizations, name card animations, infographic explainers, logo animations, map-based graphics, and even mobile app promo videos like this. And when you learn this, you can now take this as a skill to offer for clients, which you can see the demand for if you check some of the listings that offer this on Fiverr. And keep in mind, the examples you see here will be the worst they will ever be as these AI models progress further. So if you're serious about tapping into how AI is reshaping everything, and with interest for AI automation rising fast, if you look at Google Trends, then learning how to build these AI systems, which are all no-code anyway, so anyone can pick them up, is certain to pay off for you in a big way. So listen to the end and see how you too can gain this AI skill. Let's begin. Hey, if you're new here, my name is Jay. I spent a decade in creative and marketing work and half a decade leading data teams. And now I lead our AI agency and also founded the Robo Nuggets community, our education arm. We have several hundred members now, all AI creators and builders across the globe. And here the mission is to make creating with AI easy to learn regardless of what your background is. True the wealth of AI lessons that we have here, which most people join for, but most members stay because of the community that we have built. And like always, to make this lesson as easy as possible, I've organized this workflow into steps and I will also be running through it in detail so that you can understand the principles of how it's built. So first, some context in case you missed it. ByteDance, the company behind TikTok, just released Sea Dream 4.0, which is now threatening to take the number one best image model in the world from Google's Nano Banana model. And one of the key reasons is how it's able to handle extreme consistency to transform the images that you give to it and the fact that you can declare the aspect ratio for it natively. So a use case I realized after watching Kevin's video here, which you should definitely check out if you haven't yet, is that if you use use CDream to transform your image reference A into image reference B, which maintains a consistent look thanks to how powerful this model is, then you can animate from image A to image B using a video model like Hilo. Then if you just continue that and transform image B to image C and orchestrate everything through this N8N automation that also upscales that video to 4K at 60 frames per second, then you can get high quality motion graphics like this one. And all of that was made by this AI system in N8N, which if you're completely new, N8N is a no-code automation tool similar to Zapier or Make.com, but you can see how popular it's gotten because of the way that it integrates these AI systems and models. And also, if you're a bit more advanced and need a shortcut, you can just find a quick setup guide and the N8N template, which you can just download and import into N8N, and that will create the automation for you automatically. But if you're a beginner, don't worry because I'll be going through this AI system so that you know how it works. And if you look at the framework of what we'll be setting up, there's just two major steps to it. One is this portion where we are creating the motion graphics themselves. And step two will just be about combining those clips and an option to upscale them to 4K and 60 frames per second. But before we go to that, we just have a simple input section here at the top where to teach this workflow, I'll actually be running through it in steps. So what I'll do is I'll just execute up until this point where we are getting the inputs from a Google Sheet. And when that has processed, if I open this node, you'll see and it ends common design working here where you have the input section here at the left. Basically all of the data coming from previous nodes you have all the configuration parameters for the node that you are setting up here at the middle. And then you have the output section, which shows the output of this node that it passes along to future nodes. And for this one, you can see that we're about to create three scenes for this mobile app animation. And so if you go to schema, you can find there the organized inputs that we have prepared for our automation. So where did this come from? Well, if you look at the configuration of this node, we have it mapped to our Google Sheet that is called R41, where if we open that, you can see that we just have all of that information loaded here in our Google Sheet. And what this node basically did is look for the rows where the production status, which is this column, is set to create so that we can inform this workflow on what it's about to create. Now, if we expand that Google Sheet, the question now becomes, what are all these columns and how did we get them in the first place? So these first two with the title and the scene are just more for our tracking. They're actually optional for this automation. And then here in the end, you just have a production status, which will be marked as done by our automation once we have created the scene, which the automation will be placing here once it's done. But now the important columns here would be our image reference A and B, as well as the transition prompt that we have put here. So you can see these two URLs, they are basically JPEG files, where if we open those two, you can see this is just our first frame and this is our second frame. Then if you open the images for the second scene, this is the second frame, which is this image. 
And this is the third frame, which is this image. And the third scene here just has our third image as the starting point. And then the fourth image here just goes back to our very first frame from the beginning. And then to animate from point A to point B, we just have these transition prompts, which we are going to feed into the automation that you'll see in a bit before we stitch all of these scenes together. So now the obvious question is, how did we get these images in the first place? Well, this is where C-Dream 4.0 comes in. Because prior to this model, we actually don't have an easy way to create images with control controllable aspect ratios that also maintains the consistency of the look from our reference image. And there are several ways to access C-Dream, but the one we're using in this automation is through this service called KAI. They're basically an AI model aggregator. You can see they have several image and video models here, and they function sort of like an AI model app store. So if you go to their C-Dream API in here, that will take you to their playground, which would let you upload reference images as well as a prompt. And also if you scroll to the bottom, there's an option here to select your aspect ratio. And so to get those images, you can see what I did here is just to upload our starting frame and another image just as a reference for the angle of the phone as well as the 3D effect that I wanted. And then we have a fairly simple prompt here where we said that we wanted to edit the phone in file one to be in the angle orientation of file two where the phone is laid down showing travel places. For this one, it would be Europe showing famous landmarks that appear on top of the phone in 3D. And when we ran that prompt, this is what we got. And then for the third image, it's the same process where you have your starting frame here. We upload a second file just for the screen that we want to show in that phone. And then if you look at the prompt here, it's again pretty simple. We're literally just asking C-Dream to edit the phone in file 1 to be facing the camera directly and to replace what's on the screen with the screen in file 2. And when we ran that prompt, C-Dream gave us this image in return. But I actually chose this example because I wanted to illustrate something important when using C-Dream. And it's that I noticed that currently, it seems like it's not yet able to render text perfectly. And so even if the graphic is pretty good here, you can see the text is less than ideal. But the good news is Nano Banana, who is C-Dream's competitor, is also available in KAI. And so this really depends on your use case. But if you're finding that C-Dream isn't giving you what you want, you can also try out Nano Banana, which is what I did here. And you can see that for its output, it was actually able to render the text pretty well. And so if you're using these models directly, I think KAI is one of the best ways to use them at the moment, given the control that it gives you. But if in case you want to automate the image generation step in N8N as well, then just check out this previous lesson. So one of the benefits of doing this via KAI AI is that number one, you can control the aspect ratio through this drop down. And number two, they actually give you an image URL, which if you just do a right click, click on copy image address, you'll be able to paste it here, which you can see that ends in .png. So that is a URL that leads directly into that image. Now, if in case you already have images that you just need to upload somewhere, you can use this service called Cloudinary, where you can sign up for free. And if you go to assets, you'll be able to upload images here. And if you do a right click, go to copy URL that you can just paste and use in your Google Sheet or automation as well. And that is how you prepare those inputs. And so now we have those instructions loaded into this N8N workflow, and we can now proceed to creating the motion graphics for them. So what I'll do is I'll just run this workflow up to this point, and it should activate these nodes that will create those animations for us. And once that has finished, you'll see that the last node in that set just updated our production status to done for those three scenes. And it also gave us these three MP4 files corresponding to the animations that we just created. And if we view one of them, you'll see that we now have this animation that started with that frame we generated and ended with our original frame, which we intended here. So how did this automation handle that? Well, if we open this create video node, you'll see that this is basically an HTTP request node, which is the main way in N8N by which we can call on third-party tools. And for this one, we're calling on this AI model called Hilo that is being hosted by file.ai. So if we go to file.ai, you can see that they are pretty much similar to KAI. They're also an AI model aggregator. So you can see here they have hundreds of models available here. And if we search for Hilo, we'll be able to find this image to video model, which when we click on that, you'll be able to play around with this AI model. And here in the inputs, you can see that you can pass on a prompt, a starting frame, and an end image frame as well. And so to use this in N8N, you'll need to browse through this API documentation, which I've already done. And so this node is now configured to pass along our request into this address in order to use that AI model. So since we have a location of where to send our request to, if we scroll down, you'll be able to find here the specific request or message that we are sending. And so if we expand this, we just have a structure here as per file.ai's documentation where we are passing along the prompt, which if you remember is the transition prompt coming from the Google Sheet. We have here the starting image, which we've also defined here, as well as the end image, which we have defined here. 
And then if we shuffle through these requests, you'll see that we ran this node three times for the three scenes that we generated. And the third component with every HTTP request would be your credentials, which I have shown in previous lessons how to do. And I've also gone through how to set this up in our quick setup video. But when this node ran, what it did is just to submit our request into file.ai. And so what happened here is that file.ai now activated their high Luo model. And so we just need to wait a bit in order for those generations to finish. And so this wait node, we have it set at six minutes because that's a safe enough time for us to complete these generations. And once six minutes has passed, we now have this get video node where as per file AI's documentation, we'll be able to get our video from this response URL that file.ai assigned to us when we made that request. And so when this node executed, you can now see those three items and those three MP4 files returned back to us. And so the fourth node in this step is just this update Google Sheet node, where if we open that, that's once again linked to our Google Sheet we were working with. And all that did is update our production status to done, like you see here, and also load those video URLs into this final output column. And so now with these MP4 files, if you actually just need one scene, then you're pretty much done at this point. But for this automation, we took it further to do basically two things. One is we'll be combining those clips automatically through this row of nodes. And then the second is we'll be upscaling them to 4K at 60 frames per second through this second row of nodes here. And so in order to do that, what I'll do is just play this work flow up until the end here. And now that those nodes have finished running, you'll see that this final Google Sheet node updated this tab called Sheet 2 in the Google Sheet that we were working with. And now we have this MP4 file, which is in 4K 60 frames per second, which is why it's almost one gigabyte in size. And if you open the details, you can see the resolution as well as the frames per second here, which we can preview together right near the end. But before we do that, I'll just quickly explain these nodes and how they worked. Because when we generated those three scenes, you can see that we pass those three scenes into this aggregate node, which if you open that, all that really does is group those three items or scenes into one item. And so you can see the output here is just the same MP4 file links. The reason why we need to group them is because when we pass those scenes to combine them, we need them to be grouped into one item so N8N knows which ones to combine. And so when we open this next HTTP request node, what it does is to combine those clips. You can see it's another post request because we are calling on a third party tool that is called Merge Videos, which is also hosted by file.ai. And so if you go to file AI and look for the merge video model in there, you'll find it here. And what it basically does is it merges or stitches two or more videos together. And so to use it in N8N, you just need to read through this API section, which I've already done. And so now with this node, if you send your request to this address with this message, which if we open that, it's a fairly simple request where we are passing along those video URLs, which are essentially the scenes that you want to stitch together. So once this node has ran, you'll see our request is now in queue. And so what File AI has done behind the scenes is use their merge video model in order to stitch those clips together. We just have another wait node here to wait while that is processing. This one we just set at 60 seconds because for this one, it doesn't actually take that long. And once that time has passed, we now use this get combined node, which again, similar to what we had before as per File AI's documentation, we can get our combined video through this response URL that they give us. And when this executed, we now have this MP4 file, which has those clips combined. Now, if you notice, even though we have the combined video already, the next node here is actually not yet to upscale that into 4K. We have here a switch node just for error handling purposes, because if we open this, this node just has a set of predefined rules where depending on the output of this get combined node, we either route the automation to an error, a success if that video has already finished, or if the video is still in progress, then we route it to this branch. And the way it works, if you look at it visually, is that if it is still in progress, we just wait a bit more. That's why it maps back to the wait node. If it is already a success, we proceed to the next step, which is upscaling this video, which is what happened here. That's why it's green. And if in case it resulted to an error, it will just map back into this Google Sheet node, where if you open that, that's just once again linked to our Google Sheet account. And instead of loading the final video URL here, it will just put in the error message so that we have a clue on why that became an error. So that's the benefit of putting a switch node here. And if you open that, the rules set here are pretty simple and they're already tailored to file.ai's outputs. So you can see that if there's an error message, we route it to the error branch. If we already have a video URL, which is the case here, that's why it's green. Then we continue the automation in the success branch. And if the error message says that the request is still in progress, then we just map it to in progress so that we can go back to the wait node to wait a bit more. And then under options here, you'll notice that we have a fallback output. In the instance that we have a scenario that doesn't satisfy any of these three rules, then we just fall back to outputting it as an error. 
So that's the logic behind the switch node. But since this one became a success, we just passed the combined video into this upscale HTTP request node, which if you open that, you'll see that the model we use here is called Topaz Upscale. That is once again also hosted by Fall.ai. And so if you go back to Fall.ai and search for Topaz video there, you'll find that model here which once again, you can use directly here in the playground. And to use it in an automation, you'll need to read through this API documentation. And that is how we configured this node, where we are sending a request to this URL. And the message of our request is this one, where if we expand that, we just have a simple request structure here as per file AI's documentation, where we are passing along the URL of the video that we want to upscale, the factor that we want to upscale it to. So we put this in as two because this one is a 1080p video. And so upscaling the width and the height by two times will make that 4K. And then we have the target frames per second here to be 60 as well. And when we send that request, file.ai has put our request in queue. And so what it's doing is now using Topaz Labs in order to upscale our video. We just have a wait node here, which once again is set at 60 seconds. And after which we will try to get our upscale video through this node. As usual with file.ai, we try to get our video through this response URL which file AI gives us here. But you can see here, the first time that it ran, file AI actually told us that the request is still in progress, which is why when we go to the next node, which is another switch node, is the same logic as before. And you'll see the first time this ran, it mapped to in progress because that is how we configured the switch node to behave. And so when this mapped to in progress, what happened behind the scenes is that it mapped back to the wait node to wait for 60 seconds more. And then we try to get that upscaled video again. So you can see here, this actually took a while because of how big the videos can be since we're upscaling it to 4K 60 frames. So overall, this took like 10 minutes for it to generate. But once that is done, we now finally map to our success node here, where we have this final Google Sheet node that is linked to sheet two of our main document. And we're simply adding a row here to store our final video URL, which we placed here. And which if you click on that, you can now preview this animation in full. And that looks pretty professional, though obviously it's not yet perfect. So if you were to really scrutinize this, you'll see that sometimes the animation, especially when it comes to text, there's still a lot of artifacts that show up. And I think this is more with regard to the video model we're using, which if you remember is high level in this case. So this will probably improve some more if, for example, Google's VO3 or ByteDance's CDance video models also introduce start and end frame features in their APIs, which allows us to use it in automations. And also, if you're curious on the costs, the good news is when it comes to these image models, with Seadream, it's less than two cents per image. And if you need to use Nano Banana, that's also quite cheap at three cents per image if you're using their custom aspect ratio feature. High level video is probably the most expensive among these, so it's 48 cents per six second clip. But the operation to merge those videos is very cheap. Usually it's less than one cent, and upscaling is also only 10 cents per upscaled video as of right now. So that's how this automation works in full. So if you need this template as well as the quick setup guide for it, you can just find it in this page in our community which also includes all the resources like the Google Sheet template and the prompts for each of those use cases we featured in the beginning that you can directly use and try out yourself. So that's all just here in the RoboNuggets community in the link below where you can find dozens more AI and automation lessons that's geared towards marketing, advertising, and creatives. We also have a really good community of members here who share several paid opportunities if in case that's something that you're after. So go ahead and check that out, see if that's for you. But I hope you learned something new from this lesson. And if you have, consider subscribing in this platform if you haven't yet, because that helps us a lot to put out more content like this. But that's it. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.